Elementary music teacher friend, you love what you do, but you might feel unappreciated and, in fact, unseen some days. You may even feel like you're on a music teacher island and just want to connect with other music teachers who can relate to both your struggles and wins when it comes to teaching elementary music. I get you and understand completely the feelings you're having. That's why each and every week, the Elementary Music Teacher Podcast will provide you with solo and guest episodes that will help you realize you're not alone in your music teaching journey. Throughout each episode, my goal is for you to be able to walk away with actionable steps and ideas to help you feel like you're ready to take on the new week with whatever challenges may be thrown your way. Hi, I'm your host, Jessica Peresta, and I'm so glad you're here. Whether you're at home, in your car, in the shower, or wherever else you're listening, grab your cup of coffee or whatever other beverage is nearby and listen in to the Elementary Music Teacher Podcast. Hey friend, I am so excited to invite you to a free three-day challenge called the Reflect and Renew Challenge. In this free challenge, you'll begin to think about teaching elementary music in a new way. In just three days, you'll go from feeling overwhelmed to confident and will surround yourself with other music teachers who will support and encourage you. Day one is all about reflecting. You'll reflect back over where you're at in the school year and identify the highs and lows, no matter if you are joining this challenge at the beginning, middle, or end of the school year. We start with reflecting first in order to move forward successfully. Day two is all about processing. You'll process through what it is you need to focus on to make your music teaching situation successful. Then day three is all about renewal. You'll break through mindset beliefs while setting goals and action steps to help you meet them. Each day of the challenge, you'll be getting a daily challenge email that will contain action steps for you to take. So simply head to subscribepage.com forward slash reflect and renew challenge to save your seat and I'll see you there. I'm Alfonso Mendoza, host of the My Ed Tech Life podcast, a part of the Education Podcast Network. Shows on the network are individually owned and opinions expressed may not reflect others. Find other interesting education podcasts at edupodcastnetwork.com. Welcome back, everybody. This is the very final episode of the summer series, and I hope you've enjoyed it as much as I have. And today is about in person professional development opportunities. This will probably be our shortest episode by far before we get back to our regularly scheduled podcast episodes next week in August. So in person PD opportunities. This is going to be like I said, quick, because there are a lot of them, but also if I went through every single in-person opportunity, it would be a long, long, long list. So I'm gonna keep it pretty generic. The first one I wanna mention is one I mentioned in episode 252, which was the F-flat symposium. This is put on by the creators of F-flat books and it is in person and online. So that's why I wanted to include it in both of the professional development episodes. So the in-person option takes place in the Philadelphia area, and you can find out more information about that by enrolling. And if you choose the in-person option, I will be able to meet you there because I am flying to Philly again, and I'm super excited to not only present at this amazing symposium but also to sit in on the other sessions it is great not only for pd and getting to learn but also to collaborate and hang out with other music educators maybe you have known online and maybe you get to meet make in-person connections which is something that is great in my opinion about the in-person professional development options is you get to meet people and hang out in real life so that is the very first one the next one The next thing I want to talk about is the levels courses. Now, I'm going to just specifically focus on ORF and Kadai because these are the two most popular ones. But of course, there are levels courses for any type of music teaching philosophy that that is out there. And so I'm going to just 
give you kind of a an idea of how to find these opportunities. And of course, as you're listening to this at the end of July, the levels courses are probably done. But let's say you're thinking about this for next summer, then this will give you an idea of how to find these opportunities. So for me, I when I was wanting to take my ORF courses, my district at the time, I taught for Tulsa Public Schools and they brought in, this is very, I know, not common, but they, they provided the the levels courses in our district. So we all got the opportunity if we wanted to, the music teachers got to take ORF level one where it was completely paid for and it was in my actual city. So I know that's very rare and that's how I was able to go because at the time I had a newborn Owen, who's now 13, was a baby. And so I was able to attend ORF level one and learned so much. I didn't realize how much I would learn at this course. And so sometimes it falls in your lap like that. It's very rare that that happens. <laughs> but I know this is how you would find other opportunities for levels courses. First of all, I would highly suggest you go to the ORF website or the Kadai website and literally look there at what levels courses are offered around you so it may not be where it, like it happened for me where it just kind of fell into my lap in my district but maybe it's a neighboring city or even a neighboring state where you drive a few hours to get there i know uh, i know she will not care if i talk about this because she's actually talked about it on the podcast katie buckley who was katie holbrook but now she's married she and i've had conversations about she drove and stayed on campus for her, for her ORF level one, two, and three courses, levels courses. And so sometimes that's what you do. If you're not taking it where you live, you will sometimes stay in a dorm room and you will just be able to attend that way. So start off by looking at the ORF and Kadai websites, look at what's offered. I would also, if you are a part of your local ORF or Kadai chapter, they will constantly send out reminder emails or post in their particular Facebook groups about different, not just levels courses, but maybe I know for me, I used to participate in what was called ORF Alive, where the teachers in my district would get together and it was still a professional development, but instead of two weeks, it was one day. And so sometimes your or your local, excuse me, chapter will offer a one day type of session or training. And so being a part of that local chapter really does help. And a way to find that as well, I would go to if your state, well, if you go to the Orphan Kadai website, look for your particular state. And then when you click on your state, a lot of times it will list even local chapters or even join your state, uh, check out the state website as well, where it will provide um, helpful opportunities, not just for Orphan Kadai, but also for the next one I'm going to talk about is the state music ed conferences. So for me, Arkansas is where I live. And so I I'm look all around, actually. So the Arkansas Music Ed Conference, I, I look at those states that are neighboring me. Oklahoma, I've been to a lot of Oklahoma State Music Educator Conferences, but also Tulsa. I did a lot of in-person PD there. And then also I will look at Kansas, Missouri, Texas, all the kind of surrounding states near me is where I start. Then you can look at, you know, maybe states that are a little further away where you can drive, or if you want to fly there, I would suggest looking that looking at that as well. So the way to find out, first of all, follow your particular state music ed comp, music education association on, I would say, social media, whatever your platform of choice is, and then go and check out their website where they will post announcements of their upcoming conferences and when it is where it is how much it is all those things so you are aware a lot of times i know for in-person professional development opportunities especially if it's not close to where you live you have to prepare ahead of time by getting uh, days off and finding a substitute if that is the case so you can attend or even present so I would also, uh, kind of like I mentioned earlier when I was talking about the levels courses, I would look at your local city of where you live. So when I mentioned Arkansas, there's the state music ed association, but we also have a local city 
in like Northwest Arkansas is where I live. So instead of just Rogers where I live, it's the North, Northwest Arkansas Music Educators Association. And they also have a local ORF chapter. And so both of those, if that's where you live, is you have a local citywide or even your um, county offers some kind of music ed conferences, music ed workshops, levels, types of courses in training or other in-person opportunities, that is what I would look at as well. And then the next thing I want to mention is any university that is close to you is a lot of times where different workshops will be hosted. And so I would look into that too and see even Google it, what you could even just type in in person music education conferences. And I know a lot of times you will see what's coming up at various universities and colleges as well. And a lot of those may be close enough for you to drive to as well. So I feel like I said as well 30 times. So like I said, this is going to be a short episode. And these are just my suggestions when it comes to in person professional development. You heard at the beginning of the episode, join the email only challenge. It is email only right to your inbox, the reflect and renew challenge, you will get not only a helpful email guiding you with questions for you to think through, which is the point of the challenge to challenge your thinking, but also a really short and actionable video from me to you that you can watch on your own time. So let me know if you have any questions and I will be back next week with a brand new regular episode and we are done with the summer series. So thank you for joining me this summer, whether it was for one episode or all eight. I've had a blast and I hope you have too. Well, hey there. Thank you so much for listening into the Elementary Music Teacher Podcast. There is an exclusive Facebook group just for listeners of this podcast and any elementary music teacher called the Elementary Music Teacher Community Facebook group. Come on over and join us there where we have conversations around the podcast episodes and encourage each other each and every week. And also head to my website, thedomesticmusician.com. I have some free resources there that you can download to help you gain traction in your classroom today as well as the blog and the membership site and all kinds of other goodies to help you keep going in your music teaching journey. I cannot wait to keep connecting with you and encouraging you and spurring you on in your journey of teaching elementary music. Hang in there, have an amazing week, and I will see you soon.